Hello guys and welcome to episode 5 where we're going to be talking about middlewares. Middlewares are functions that fall between the client and the endpoints of our application. So anytime a client makes an HTTP request, it's going to be intercepted by our middlewares, one after the other, before it actually reaches its corresponding endpoint. That way we can have a lot of power over that request, we can validate it, we can log it, we can manipulate it and execute a lot of operations on it. We can also end the request response cycle from our middlewares. For example, let's say we had a middleware that would validate a request, make sure it has an authentic access token. If it doesn't, it can actually stop the request response cycle right there before it actually reaches our endpoints. So as you can see, middlewares have a lot of use cases and they are very powerful. If we take a look at the documentation, we can see that we have a client making an HTTP request which is going to be intercepted by a middleware before it actually continues to a specific route handler. If you've used Express before, you've probably seen this, app.use, and then here we pass in a function. So here I've made a middlewares folder where we have two different middlewares. Basically it's two functions that take a request, a response, and next. And then what they do is they just simply log a message. The first one says reached middleware number one, and then the second one reached middleware number two. And as you can see, we're also invoking the next function. And just like we said before, if we had multiple middlewares, the request would be intercepted by one after the other. And to do that, we would need to use the function next. Also note that those are the same uh, objects from the express package, request, response, and next function. And now in our main.ts, let's go ahead and add those middlewares. So middleware one and middleware two. And let's see what happens whenever we make an API call. I'm going to make an HTTP request to this route handler, get all customers. Let's go ahead and run our server. And now in Postman, if I make a call to this route, customer, as you can see, we got the empty array. So we know that we have reached this route handler correctly. And now if we take a look at the console, we can see reached middleware number one and reached middleware number two, which are the two middlewares that we have added here. Now, in order to make it more clear, let's go ahead to our customer controller and let's say, let's add a log here and say reached controller. Let's save and let's see the ordering of the logs. If you go back to Postman and hit on send, if you take a look back in our console, we can see reached middleware number one, number two, and then reach controller. So as we can see, the middlewares are in fact in the middle between the client and the actual endpoints. Now let's say we swap the ordering of those two middlewares. So I have middleware number two first before middleware number one. Let's save. And now if I hit send and go back, we can see reached middleware number two and then reached middleware number one. So as we can see, the ordering of the middlewares matter. It's going to go from the first up until the last in an orderly manner. I fixed the order again. And now let's say in middleware number one, we forget to add the next function and let's see what happens. If we go back to Postman and hit on send, as you can see, it's stuck on sending request. If we take a look at the log, we can see reached middleware number two, and then the request stopped here. It did not go to the second middleware. And that's because, as we said, we need to use next in order for it to jump to the next middleware in line. Now let's see what happens if we say res.send, and let's say here we say, I don't know, uh, name John or anything else. If we hit on save, and this is in middleware one and the function, if we go back to Postman and hit on send, as you can see, we got this response. So as we said previously, we can end the request response cycle inside of any of our middlewares before it actually reaches our endpoints. This is what we've done here. Now let's say we wanted to log our requests being made to the server. We can, for example, make it like a logger middleware making a request to, and then from the request object, we are taking the method and then the original URL. Now, if I open Postman and then hit on send, if you take a look at the logs, we can see making a request to get customer. So this is a more useful use case now. Let's see what we covered so far. Middleware is a function which is called before the route handler. We've seen that. They have access to the request response objects and the next middleware function, which we have seen as well. Those are the three different properties for our middlewares. And then here they tell us that nest middlewares by default are equivalent to express middlewares. And we did see the uh, similarity. We've used app.use and then we passed in the 
uh, functions which take rec, res, and next. And they tell us here that the middleware functions can perform the following tasks, execute any code, make changes to request and response objects. So for example, here we could have added a property on the rec object. We could have said rec.user, rec.whatever, and then added anything we wanted. And then we can also end the request response cycle, just like we've seen here when we removed next and then we said res.send and then we had name John. So we can end it right there in a middleware. And then call the next middleware function in the stack, which is what we're always doing to pass the request from one middleware to the other. And then finally, if we forget to use the next function, the request will be left hanging, just like we've seen in Postman whenever I hit send and we did not have the next function or we did not invoke that function, the request was left hanging. So far, we've used actual functions as middlewares. However, in Nest, we can also use classes. So the function is known as functional middlewares and then we have the class-based middlewares. So here I've created a third middleware called middleware3 in the form of a class. However, this class is special. It has to be decorated with at injectable and then it also should implement an interface called nest middleware. If you go to nest middleware, we can see that it has the use method, which actually take three different parameters, rec, res, and next, the request object, the response object, and then the next function, just like we've seen here in a functional middleware. So it takes the same parameters. And of course, in OOP, whenever you need to implement an interface, you need to implement every single method that exists inside of that interface. So we need to have an implementation for use, which is what we have here. Basically, I'm just logging reached middleware number three, and then I'm using next so that it can jump to the next middleware. Let's try now to register this third middleware by calling its name and then importing it. Now, it doesn't give us an error, but if we do try to run the server, and then if we do try and hit send on Postman, as you can see, internal server error. If we take a look here, class constructor middleware three cannot be invoked without new. All right, let's go ahead and add new. And then if we save, as you can see, app.use requires a middleware function, a middleware function, which is the first type of middleware that we've seen, which looks like an express middleware. Hmm, well, how can we actually use a class-based middleware? Now, before answering this question, I wanna answer another question that you might have, which is why would I bother and use a class-based middleware if I can simply use a function? Well, the answer is that with the class-based middleware, you can actually make use of dependency injection because here we can have a constructor and then we can use private and then pass in any injectable here so that we can make use of it inside of our middleware. However, in the function-based middleware, we cannot inject anything here. Also, side note that we have a warning here, Express and Festify handle middleware differently and provide different method signatures and more. You can check that out here in the documentation. For example, for Festify, you have different types and different ways of handling it. But the default behavior, which is similar to Express, is the way we've been doing it so far. Now, let's go ahead and answer this question. How can we actually apply this class-based middleware if you cannot use it in app.use just like functional middlewares? Well, let's go ahead and remove that from here and go to our app.module. Sadly, inside of the object here, we don't have anything called uh, middleware, for example. Those are the only properties that you have. Thankfully, the documentation makes it easy for us. They tell us that we should make use of the configure method of the module class and that modules that have middlewares should implement the nest module interface. If you take a look here, in the app module, where they wanna actually apply the logger middleware, what they did was they implemented the nest module interface and then they implemented the configure method. So I went ahead and actually implemented the same way. Now we need to, of course, to import nest module and middleware consumer from uh, nest.js common. And as you can see, configure takes one parameter of type middleware consumer. This is a helper class that provides different functions or different methods that can be chained or applied to our middleware. For example, here we have apply dot for routes. We could also have dot exclude and so on. Apply takes an array of middlewares. So here we can say middleware one, which is actually the function. And we can also add middleware three, middleware two. And this is the same as having it here. 
if we have the wildcard inside of four routes. So let me explain something. Whenever we have a middleware here in app.use, and just like we said, app.use only takes functional middlewares, we are actually setting this middleware as a global middleware. So it will be applied to every single route in our application. However, when we are applying a middleware inside of a module, let's say the app module, for example, and we use the consumer.apply method, and then we add the middlewares list, we need to specify this middleware should be applied to which route. So here, for example, if you take a look at routes, it can take different uh, properties. It can take a string. So if, for example, I could say customer here. And then if I save and I hit send on slash customer, you can see all these middlewares. Now to make it simpler, I'm going to remove those middlewares here and just have middleware one and middleware three. And let's make a postman call. As you can see, making a request to get slash customer and then reaching middleware number three. Now let's say instead of slash customers, I wanted to call slash cats. We also got an empty array, but this time we got nothing. Our middlewares were not executed. We did not get the log of the request being made, nor did we get the log from middleware number three, although we did have them applied here. And that's because we specified customer at the base route. Now, instead we could use the wildcard, making it a global middleware. And now if we save and then make a call to slash cats, if I hit send, if you take a look at the logs, we can see making a request to get slash cats and then reach middleware number three. Instead of actually passing routes or strings, we can also pass controllers here. So now we can add the cats controller to four routes. If I save and hit on send to any cats handler inside of the cats controller. So any handler that you might have here, we can see that we are going to actually enter those middlewares. They will be applied. But if I try to call slash customers now, if you take a look, no new logs. For routes can also take an object with a method property, which is an enum of request method to specify which request method we want. We can have get, post, whatever. And we can also specify the path. As well, we can pass multiple objects since for routes takes an array. So we've seen that we can pass in an object, a string, or a controller to for routes. And we can also use dot exclude, which also can take a method and a path to specify which method and path should be excluded. So these middlewares would not be applied to anything inside of the exclude uh, function. And then we can also say customers, for example, if we don't want the customers to have those middlewares applied to. We can also make use of wildcards in our path, but I'm not gonna go through that, you get the point. So to summarize, we've seen that in nest, we can have two different types of middlewares, functional middlewares, which is just a simple function, just like in express, or a class-based middleware in which we would need to decorate the class with at injectable and then we would need to implement the nest middleware interface and then implement the use method and then for both cases our function or method would need to have those three different properties or parameters request response at next and we've seen that if we want to pass the request from one middleware to the other we would need to use or invoke the next method or else the request is going to be left hanging and then we wouldn't get a response we've also seen that we can cut the request response cycle short by using res.send or then throwing an error here so we can return a response without actually reaching the endpoint. We also said a way to choose if we should go with the function based middleware or the class based middleware is to look if we have any dependencies. So for example here in middleware 3 where we made a class we are able to use dependency injection by saying constructor private and then injecting anything here for example we could inject a logger service and make use of it inside of our use but if we don't have any dependency injection we can just use simply use a function based middleware we've seen that if we have a global middleware we can register it in main.ts app.use and then we pass in the function name and that this only works with functional middlewares it does not work with class based middlewares if we need to register a class based middleware we would need to go to any module usually the app module, and then we would need to implement the nest module interface, which gives us this configure method, which we would need to implement, where we can apply the middlewares that you have. This apply method takes an array of middlewares. It takes both kinds of middlewares, functional middlewares, and then the class-based middlewares. They both work here. And then we have exclude. So we've said for exclude, we can specify which routes should be excluded. So the middleware would not be applied or called whenever we are calling any route that is excluded and then we said the four routes takes multiple different uh, 
kind of parameters. So the first thing is if we apply the star wildcard, then this is similar to actually having a global middleware because it will be applied to all of our routes in the application. We also said that we can have an object. So if you take a look here, it can take a path and a method. We also said it's an array of objects, so we can have multiple objects here. We can also have multiple controllers and it also supports controllers. If this video was helpful, please leave a like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next episode. This is a bonus section if you're still watching. Well, the class-based middleware here, which I had created, I've added some more logic to it. So now I'm depending on the logger service, which comes from nest.js slash common, which is the default logger that nest uses, as you can see here, for example, this is the default logger. So what I'm doing is I'm getting the method and the path from the request. Actually, I want the original path, the original URL. And then I'm taking the time in which the request was made. And then, as you can see, we have an event on res.on on finish. So whenever there's a response ready to be returned, what I'm doing is I'm getting the status code from the response. And then we are getting the time in which the response is ready to be sent. So now we have the request time and then the response time. So we can get the duration it took to actually get a response after making the request. And then whenever the status code is 201 or 200, which means successful, we are going to use that logger dependency and then log a message showing the method, the URL, the status code, and the time it took for this request to be processed. Of course, I had to register the middleware here, logging middleware, and to be able to use or to inject the logger provider here, I had to add it in the providers array in app module. Now, if I go ahead and hit send to any route since we have the star wildcard. When I hit send, as you can see, we get a new log saying log get, which is the method type, slash customer, which is the URL, the status code of the response, and then the time it took to actually get a response. So the purpose of this middleware is to log every successful response from our server.